Good evening, friends. Welcome back to the basement. This is Dave bringing you part six of the T1 models A10 EDF conversion. Um, quite a bit has been done since our last video. Um, as you will be able to see, we have our tail section attached with our rudders and our elevators, which I'm going to start quickly with that. I wanted everybody to know <clears throat> that when you set up your elevator section, you're going to want to lay a straight edge across the top of this and they should be level. That's the setting for the elevator. So when you set these up, that's what it needs to be. Second, we've got our pods in place, power system is hooked up, everything is working. Um, We've got our wiring run, lines are in, ESCs are in place, well they're going to be in place anyway. And underneath, if you look, there is a huge bundle of wiring, which is what we're going to cover right now. When you run your wires, one of the very first things you're going to notice from your wings, this is from the fuselage. Right now, you'll see I have two wires coming out of the fuselage. We'll ignore the other ones for right this second. When the plane came from the factory, I had three. The third one, one showed retract on it. The other one showed gear on it. Uh, I don't know if they were mislabeled. Yeah, they were. one was gear, one was retract. <coughs> However... I don't know if they changed the wiring in this plane. I don't know if there used to be lights in the wings on the gear. You will not need the third line. All you will need is one male and one female for the lights if you got the lighting kit. If you didn't, these won't be there at all. The next thing, if you bought the wiring harness, you'll want to run your single your shorter single link red and white or uh, red and black wire harness this is for the landing gear only that's all it's for um, so when they come out of your wings you'll put your other harness attach those to your landing gear and that is what will connect your gear and your brakes from the wings the third thing, of course, is your larger harness piece, your four-way. We ran the one section in the wings. This is the second section. Now, there's four feet of wiring attached to this. If you were to run this and need it to go all the way to your nose section, if you were to decide to go ahead and put your receiver all the way in the nose, there's plenty of wire. I did not. My receiver is on the second tray underneath. So what ended up having to happen underneath this removable tray, if you look down in, I had to bundle my wiring. There is not room underneath that bottom tray for that wiring. By the time you finish the lighting and run the lighting underneath, You'll be able to bundle the lighting underneath and fit it. You will not be able to put your wiring harness underneath. So what I had to do was bundle it and put it as far forward as possible. So yeah, you're going to have a little bit of spaghetti. Don't be surprised. And that's provided you use the, the wiring harness that's available with the plane. I will say though, having it is an incredible convenience. It does add some weight, but in the grander scheme of things, is it worth it to make it easier? Absolutely. Um, your lighting, I want to continue on that vein. From the factory, <clears throat> underneath this tray, and I, I avoided showing all the spaghetti for a reason because it's just confusing. You're going to have, as part of it, this four-way piece was part of the lighting underneath that tray. This doesn't serve a purpose. Don't use it disconnect it. Run all of your lighting 
forward into the light box individually. You'll have four, I believe they're male connectors. Those will all connect to a harness underneath, if you can see it, for this light controller. Plug those in. Those run your slime lights. There are going to be two slime lights that come in in the nose section. Those have female connectors that will also connect to that harness that's underneath. Plug those in. And then as you can see, everything else, your landing gear lights, your bottom light, those all, they're all marked on the nav light controller. Those are all going to go in here. Follow those instructions. Now, the instruction manual that comes with this navigation light controller is wrong. Um, what you'll find is this wire, I apologize folks, it's a little tight. This wire right here says light power. It will come plugged into the second uh, unit in here, which uh, is not where it belongs. The first one will say switch. The last one will say throttle. Um, this light power needs to be in the switch position. The one that says switch, which is what originally was plugged into that, needs to go into your receiver. And what that's for is that's what turns your lights on and off. That's what sends the signal to let the lights know, hey, I need to turn on and off. Now mine is on the dial since I'm using a spectrum system on the top. You could use a two position switch, you could use a three position switch. I found that the dial worked great and I had that available. So <clears throat> once that's connected and plugged in, everything will start to work. But if you don't, Plug the lights in and follow them straight into the controller and put them in the positions that they belong in. I found that the lights didn't work. And I spent a very long time tracing all my wires to make sure everything was plugged in, everything was connected so that it worked properly. Um, it did come pre wired uh, as far as the power system, the power connectors to both of the light controllers. And what it is underneath, there's a 12 volt converter for your lights underneath. It's got a little harness for your slime lights to plug into because the voltage is different. So it steps your voltage. So your main power connector, and this is not my final setup folks, just so you know. Um, this was just so I had something to use. Is on an EC3 or excuse me, an XT60. This was all wired. My gun was already wired. You can see the, the braided wire. That ran underneath, that ran into the converter that was underneath. It had a Y into it that was put into your landing gear controller and your nav light controller, which leads me to the landing gear controller. The landing gear controller is pre-programmed. So, what you're going to look for is where it says gear in, that wire that they supply with the kit, this is what goes into whatever channel you use for your landing gear. Uh, mine's channel 5, which is pretty standard for Spectrum. So I plug that into channel 5. That's what made my gear work. Same thing for your brakes. Whatever channel you're going to use for your brakes, that goes for your brakes. So you're in on these are what go into your receiver. Then you have the steering. This goes into whatever you're using for your steering channel. This mixes all of that. The steering servo itself is has its own plug um, and it naturally, it's got a gyro built into it and you'll just plug straight into it, into the landing gear controller. Um, this is for your door. That was already connected uh, from the factory. That controls your landing gear door for the nose. And then these, your left and your right brake, are what come in from the wings. And that's where that connector earlier that I showed you um, comes in. 
from the harness kit. So then these <laughs> are your connectors for your landing gear themselves. This is what actuates your landing gear. Uh, I know that's a lot of information to digest. So if anybody has any questions regarding that, please don't hesitate to, to put it down and I will do my best to answer it. I'm still finalizing some of the wiring. Um, the next thing, the tray that came on the top of this was not removable. It was too big. Uh, I'm not even sure how they got that in there. I had to cut it and get it out uh, because all you could do with it before was just slide it forward. There was no space. And unfortunately, I had a mishap when I was fitting the cockpit, and when I slid it back, it pulled the wires out of the linear actuator. So I've had to reorder that to take care of it. So what has happened, and you can probably see it, I sanded out this section and that section. I put a shelf in underneath it, which, again, hard. I apologize, a little hard to see. This was already here, so I measured it down, and I did the same thing on the far end, as you can see down here, and I built a shelf at the bottom on the other side as well. And what that is for is the new tray that I cut that you can remove, take in and out, so you have access to your batteries and to your electronics. This tray will fit in goes in through your top hatch. It will slide past your other parts. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, um, but slides in, gets into your tray area. It was a pretty simple setup. Let me get my hand in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. My hand back. As you can see, it slides into beginning where the screws go in and then in the back the back piece just sits down onto the tray your front two screws screw down in there your back two screws to hold it in place are right there which i just drilled into the back to the retainer that's what holds your battery tray in which of course i still need to put my uh hold downs for the cockpit section where it sits up here, that's what the line is. That's where the batteries, as far forward as the batteries can go, excuse me, without interfering with the cockpit actuator and the linear actuator. So you can, however, with the cockpit out right here where your pilot and your accessories sit, you can reach through the front and you can place your batteries in and there's plenty of space from the back. So obviously your ESCs go here and your plug-ins. So you have easy access to your batteries. You have plenty of space to put your hands in there for Velcro or for whatever. I am going to put a stop piece here on the batteries just to make sure, you know, it'll probably be a piece of quarter inch ply that I just glue down onto the board or screw down so that when I slide my batteries in, they can't go past that point. So it'll be two 12S setups, so it'll be a pair of 6S and a pair of 6S stacked, likely Velcroed down onto the tray. Um, I did a preliminary CG on this the other day. It's roughly going to take between all of the batteries in the front, uh, and these are not the batteries I'm going to be using. I'm going to use a pair of Spectrum 4000 2S and likely that Admiral 5000 2S uh, weights are about the same, but dynamically it, it balances a little better. And then it required about 16 more ounces in the nose in order to make the CG. So your total came out to about three and three quarters pounds of nose weight to get the CG with the gear down. Uh, that extra weight will go underneath this tray which is also removable and I've still got to put the velcro into that as well um, everything works I'm in the finalization once everything is tied down I have all the wiring tied down and everything's where it's supposed to go 
uh, I will do one more video as a wrap up. So again, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Comments. The Schubler sound amazing, by the way. I did the first run up today. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you and getting this project wrapped up and maidened hopefully very soon. This is Dave down in the basement. Take care, everyone.